Yaroslav Gregor was a Czech writer and lawyer also publishing as Yaroslav Belshovsky. He was born in 1901 in Rashovice and studied law at the Masaryk University in Brno. In 1929 he married Anna Klementova. During the German occupation of Czechoslovakia, he was investigated for anti-German activities and placed in the Miroshov concentration camp in 1945. He was the leader of the Napoleonic Society of Czechoslovakia and from 1933 the Friends of France Society. He died in 1968. His prose work is very much neglected compared to his non-fiction work on finance or Napoleon. We will review his 1924, initially self-published, A Curse Proof Love. We see Zdenek Poritsky part from his beloved Helenka and meet a nobleman at a clandestine meeting in a cafe. The Baron promises to give Zdenek the money he always wanted for his amateur Egyptological trip to well Egypt. The Baron tells him he must do something for the money on which he will not elaborate and has Zdenek sign a suicide note in his own name in case he were to die so the Baron would not be bothered by the police. I don't know about you, but I see no red flags here whatsoever. So a man named Study comes in and hypnotizes Denik and brings him to the secret meeting place of a degenerate society of bored nobles who draw cards to see which of them should commit voluntary suicide. Then as they imprison Denik to try and force him to kill himself, the Baron rescues him purely because he too pulled out the death card. He sends Denik home and goes to Britain thinking he is safe. But then Zdenik gets news of the Baron's death and a card from Monsieur Study asking him to kill himself. Study then tries to make him by trying to make his fiancée leave him, but Helenka refuses to believe his lies. Zdenek then goes to Egypt as soon as possible, but is followed onto the boat by Study in disguise, who takes photos of him walking the deck with Vanda, a female fellow passenger. Now comes the most infuriating part of the book. Zdenek knows Study was apprehended. He knows he took photos of him on board and finds a letter addressed to his fiancée in Study's room, and actively chooses not to write her letter saying what happened, thinking it would distress her. So Helenka gets the photos, then despite her friends reminding her the man who sent them is untrustworthy, she tries to poison herself. In Egypt, Zdenek meets the American millionaire McLean, who shows him his magic ring that brought about the death of every person who owned it. And as the two go to a museum, one of the mummies just stands up, coughs up some phlegm and falls over, and this has nothing to do with anything. As Zdenek goes around Cairo, he is found by Study, who hypnotizes him to go starve to death in the desert. Because he can't kill him according to the rules of the society, but taking away his free will to make him die against his will is permissible somehow? After narrowly escaping, Zdenek goes to save Wanda who was kidnapped to make him commit suicide, winds up in a pyramid and is rescued by the police who kills Study off screen. Zdenek then finds out Banda is pregnant, so he resigns himself to marry her out of duty, but the Egyptian sarcophagus of a priestess of Amon-Ra he brought with him from Egypt begins to assail his loved ones with the curse of the title 160 pages in, killing his father in a train crash and driving his mother insane. Then he discovers Helenka is still alive and abandons the pregnant Wanda and marries her instead. As the two go with McLean to America, the sarcophagus causes the sinking of the Titanic, but both Helenka and Zdenek are alive. Also, Wanda was on board and drowned, so now they can adopt his son and disregard any other moral complications. An amusing story despite the sensationalist presentation.